Last video, we discussed hormones in the blood and how they were degraded. Enzymatic action, elimination through the kidneys, liver enzymes, and we talked about the half-life and the half-life of anything. Half-life is also involved in medications. In other words, uh, a drug company will determine how long the, the medication lasts in the blood based on half-lives, and that will determine how often the dosing needs to be. Okay, we go a little further. Interactions of hormones that target cells. Okay, they are, here, here's how hormones can work. Several hormones can work together or against one another. All right. One example of, of, of ser, uh, one of two or more hormones is permissiveness. Permissiveness is where one hormone cannot exert its effect without another hormone being pregnant present being present that's especially with some of the sex hormones and you'll be talking about that um, when you study the reproductive system another t method is synergism more than one hormone produces the same effect on the target cell for example glucagon and epinephrine bo both raise uh, blood glucose level okay antagonistic is the opposite one or more hormones oppose the action of another hormone. For example, insulin lowers blood glucose and glucagon raises it. So these are ways hormones can work. Several hormones can work in conjunction. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> control. Now, we're looking at control of hormone release. Blood levels of hormones are controlled by negative feedback systems. When we talked about negative feedback in ANP1, vary only with a na narrow range. Hormones are synthesized and released in response of humoral stimuli, neural stimuli, and hormonal stimuli. So let's look at that. Okay. Humoral. It comes from a Latin word humor, like vapor or moisture of body fluids things that emanate within the body fluids. So change in blood levels of ions and nutrients directly stimulate certain hormones. For example, calcium in the blood can cause the parathyroid, hand, uh, uh, parathyroid gland to secrete PTH. PTH raises the uh, blood calcium level by activating bone to release calcium from bone in other areas, okay? But what stimulated the blood levels of calcium in the blood stimulated the parathyroid gland to do that. Okay, humor. Okay. So the capillary blood contains low calcium, which stimulates this, which stimulates to release parathyroid hormone from the parathyroid glands. They are in the, they ride the back of the thyroid gland. That's why they call the parathyroid glands. And they will go in and they can cause osteoclasts to act, which would uh, eat into bone and release calcium. They can also cause urine uh, retention in the kidney of calcium, so not as much as urinated out. Increase absorption of calcium from the intestine, so not much is passed in the feces. So, again, to raise the calcium. But how did the parathyroid gland know how to know? Is because of the humoral effect. Okay, let's go further. Neural stimuli. Nerves, let's say, nerves can come in and, like, okay, for example, <clears throat> The adrenal medulla here makes epinephrine. It's a catecholamine because it has a catechol ring, something to study in my biochemistry in AMP1. In AMP but the adrenal medulla makes epinephrine. Epinephrine is a hormone. Norepinephrine is a neurotransmitter. Epinephrine is a hormone. Norepinephrine is a neurotransmitter. However, they both are made from tyrosine. Tyrosine as a precursor, which is one of your amino acids, has a catechol ring. And everything made from that will be a catecholamine. Mike, what else is made from that? Dopamine. Dopamine also is a catecholamine. But one way to get the adrenal 
the adrenal medulla to release would be preganglionic uh, fibers from the sympathetic nervous system would directly synapse on the chromaffin cells. Here we go. The chromaffin cells within the medulla of the adrenal gland. And the chromaffin cells then would release epinephrine. Epinephrine. So the sympathetic nervous system would stimulate the adrenal medulla to secrete catecholamines, primarily epinephrine. Now it can also secrete some norepinephrine because norepinephrine is a precursor to epinephrine. Norepinephrine, the NOR means it does not have the methyl group added. When, it's, when the methyl group, CH3, is enzymatically added to norepinephrine, it becomes epinephrine. But you know the other name for epinephrine, because it comes from the adrenal gland, is called adrenaline. Okay? All right. So that's, that's my neural stimuli. Hormonal stimuli. Hormones stimulate other endocrine glands to re release their hormones. <clears throat> These are called trophic hormones. A trophic hormone, by definition, is a hormone released from one endocrine gland that can go to another endocrine gland and make it release hormone. <clears throat> Hypothalamic hormones stimulate the release of most anterior pituitary hormones. Hypothalamic hormones, in, so in other words, the hypothalamus would cause would send down a hormone from the hypothalamus that would cause the anterior pituitary to release a hormone. Then many of the anterior pituitary hormones are trophic hormones as well because they would turn on, like for example, thyroid TSH, thyroid stimulating hormone we'll talk about, would turn on the thyroid gland to make thyroid hormone, which would be T3 and T4. Adrenal corticotrophic hormone from here, hormone, trophic, see, adrenal cortical, would turn on the adrenal cortex, the medulla we talked about already. Okay? So, in other words, anterior pituitary hormones stimulate target tissues to secrete still more hormones called trophic hormones. Okay? So, we'll go further here. All right. Here's pituitary, LH, and FSH, so the hypothalamus will secrete gonadotrophin-releasing hormone. A lot of discussion will be on this in the reproductive section you'll study. And that would turn on the anterior pituitary to produce these, gonad these uh, gonadotrophins, LH and FSH, and then they would go to the testes, the ovaries, and, and a lot of this will be discussed in the reproductive The nervous system modifies the stimulation of endocrine glands and their negative effect. Under severe stress, the hypothalamus and sipid are activated. As a result, blood glucose levels rise. Right? Because the sympathetic nervous system can turn on epinephrine, and epinephrine can increase the blood sugar. Okay, so we go a little further. So I'm going to stop right here, and this is where we're going to start on some of the specific hormones, the pituitary and hypothalamus, and then talk on some specific hormones. So I'll close this one here.